Hi, Madeline Brock here, and welcome back to Unplug the Christmas Machine, based on the book by the same name by Joe Robinson and Jean Kopek Staheli. It's Black Friday! The day following Thanksgiving has an interesting history, and if you're interested in such things, the history website has great information about it. Here's the link. And here's the condensed version. Back in the 1950s, the police in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, used the term to describe the total chaos that ensued on the day after Thanksgiving, when hordes of suburban shoppers and tourists flooded the city in advance of the Army-Navy football game, which was held on the Saturday after Thanksgiving each year. The police had major problem with traffic and crowds, and shoplifting on that day, and they named that day Black Friday. Sometime in the late 1980s, retailers found a way to reinvent Black Friday, and it was great for their post-Thanksgiving sales. It was the red to black concept, and here's how it worked. After almost a whole year of operating at a loss, or being in the red, stores would earn a profit, or go into the black, by offering greatly discounted merchandise. Holiday shoppers would take advantage of these sales and frequently spend even more money than they planned because the sale prices were just too good to pass up. Modern extensions of this concept gave us Cyber Monday, with online sales becoming more and more popular each year. This year, projected sales from Cyber Monday are between three and four billion dollars. Retailers are trying to make up for lost sales due to the pandemic. And so we see campaigns like Black Friday All November and Shop Local Saturday. We are being encouraged on television, social media, and catalogs to spend more money than ever before. And this is a huge challenge for people who have lost their jobs or had their hours cut back. There's more pressure than ever before to go into debt to celebrate an extravagant Christmas. Whether you have a tradition of an exciting shopping extravaganza on Black Friday or you make it a point to stay home or perhaps go camping, remember the Christmas pledge that we talked about at the very beginning of this series. The first two points of the Christmas pledge are these. Remember the people who truly need my gifts and express my love in more direct ways than gifts. You can make the choice to be creative this holiday season with your gift giving. The most treasured gift we can give another person is the gift of our time. And when you choose to give your time as a gift, it changes you and the person you give that gift to. Maybe right now, you can only do lunch or coffee over a Zoom call, but that time can still be a special treasured time. My husband and I used to give our elderly parents the gift of a whole day. We'd tell them to make a list of some of the things they'd like to get done around their house, and we'd arrange a time and a day, and we'd go. We'd do chores, we'd take them to lunch, and then spend some relaxed time simply talking with them. And now, in our turn, we ask our children to do the same thing for us. This year, we'll have to wait until the pandemic settles down a little bit, but just knowing that they'll be coming to spend time with us just makes it sweeter when it does happen. This year, look for the people who truly need your gifts and find ways of expressing your love other than material gifts. Make it happen. You'll be amazed at the way it helps you unplug the Christmas machine. 